What's up? It's Tom. We're going to do a Twins 5. This is a feature that I'll turn to when we have a bunch of news items to talk about that we haven't got to on the channel. Uh, going to discuss some of last night's game, as you may have guessed from uh, the thumbnail and this image here, and Phil Cuzzy, the umpire. Uh, of course, the infamous Phil Cuzzy in twin circles. We're also going to talk Tyler Malley, Griffin Jacks, Keone Cavaco, and then just do a sort of a vibe check after that. Uh, so, you know, buckle up. Buckle up, gra grab your axes to grind, because uh, the this one's going to get a little bit ugly uh, compared to the usual on the channel here. Uh, but, you know, of course, I've got this pulled up here um, in case you missed it last night. First off, tip of the cap. Tip of the cap to everybody who stayed up and stuck through that game. Um, unfortunately, you were not rewarded. Uh, unfortunately, not only did the Twins lose in extra innings out west, so it was extra late here in the central time. If that, you know, that's where most of you are, I'm sure. Not all of you, but most of you watching the channel. Um, and you got treated to... Uh, uh, Phil Cuzzy basically taking the game away from the Twins, um, not not to even to mention some other umpiring issues. We're not going to totally rehash last night's game. Um, I don't think anybody wants to do that. As much as we're we're, we're grinding axes today, we're not going to go into that uh, too deep. But Alex Kirilov just totally had the bat taken away from him. Uh, one one call way outside, one call way inside, both called strikes. I mean, what do you even do at that point? And on the screen here, you'll see that data that I have. Uh, that's from umpscorecards.com or um, twi on Twitter that are umpscorecards. Um, really great information that they share. They have one of these for like every single game. As you see there, you know, umpires are usually pretty close, pretty even. So when they're bad, they're bad for both sides. But, you know, their metric shows that there was a 1.39 run advantage for the Dodgers in this game. And again, this was a tight game. This was a game that went into extra innings. This was a game that went forever. Um, so that had a huge impact in this game. I'm not one to complain about umpiring. Like I said, it does usually even out, I feel like, uh, for the most part. But uh, ugly, ugly, ugly in this one. Um, you know, the Twins also missed some opportunities, certainly. Um, and that's that's frustrating as well. Um, anytime you have a game uh, that goes that long and that ends up a one-run game, you can always say that, but... Uh, ugh, ugh, feel bad for Alex, who's been playing really great, seen the ball well since he came back. So that was the first one I wanted to talk about. Just, just a middle finger to Phil Cuzzy once again. Uh, moving on, let's just keep with that vibe, uh, that 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 uh, just sour vibe, because Tyler Malley is going to have Tommy John surgery. So, you know, that essentially closes the book on his side of this trade. Uh, now, what? Maybe they'll sign him to an extension like they did with Paddock, and he'll come back and pitch. It's tough to sort of try to evaluate that into the trade because you know when they traded for Malley, he didn't have that. That wasn't part of what they traded for. Um, but you know, obviously, the it's looking incredibly slim that Malley's really going to give them any kind of value at this point, even if they do sign him to an extension because he's having Tommy Johnny's out for the year. Um, you know. Well, it's, this has worked out horribly. There's no, there's no really two ways about it. Uh, yeah, the Twins have acquired some pitchers that have gotten hurt. They've also had some, some really good starting pitching trades. Uh, if you look around, I mean, what percentage of the league is either injured in terms of rotation guys, or recently injured, or if we look back a month from now, had gotten injured in that month? It's like just starting pitchers are so unreliable health-wise right now. Not to give them a free pass on this one. Clearly, Malley was not a good target. Some of the other guys out there at the deadline um, were uh, not not good targets either. Frankie Montas is, is hurt, um, who was the other kind of big fish of that um, trade deadline class. It's tough. It, well, what do you do? Um, you, I, I think that the, the simple answer is, well, you just develop a bunch of starting pitchers and you don't have to worry about it. That sounds great. That sounds great. Uh, that's much easy. That's much easier said than done. Um, the Twins haven't done a great job at that. Although you know, uh, with Bailey Ober and Louis Varland um, kind of emerging and, and from late round picks, they have some guys coming up through the system as well. I still think you you try these trades. I still think you go after these guys. And again, uh, if you don't want to trade for any guys you think might get hurt. Um, you're just going to probably have a really bad rotation for a really long time. Because <laughs> even when maybe you think you've built up a rotation of arms who are good enough, uh, do you got seven, eight 
nine of those guys because there's going to be guys going down. Uh, guys are going to be getting hurt. So, um, yes, number one, definitely uh, drafting, developing, signing international pitchers and getting them along. That's clearly the best case scenario. The Twins hadn't been doing a good job of that, so they, that, that was sort of the penalty they had to pay. They didn't want to pay the free agency. The Twins haven't been signing pitchers to free agent contracts, multi-year free agent contracts. Um, so they got it. They had to address it somehow. And fingers crossed, knock on all the wood. But Pablo Lopez was a guy who had a lot of injury concerns prior to last year. So it's really difficult. You can't just say, "Oh, they should just trade for guys who have perfect pictures of health." You know, I would say mostly if you're trading non-elite position players, so like non-premium position players, so not catchers, shortstops, center field. Um, and not pitchers, so you know, that, that's where this one, the Steve Hadger being in this trade, that maybe goes against what I'm saying. Um, I'm not too concerned about trading for an established Major League pitcher and uh, getting rid of those guys. Obviously, this is going to more than likely look horrible, and it could look horrendously bad um, But when all is said and done, but um, I still think, you know, pitching is at a premium, and the only way you can assure you have enough pitching is try to get too much pitching is kind of, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Next topic, topic number three, Griffin Jacks has been a guy a lot of people have been asking about. Another one I should clarify before we get into some of my thoughts on a, on a rough spell. He is on a very rough spell. It feels like he's given up runs in, you know, seven consecutive outings. I, I don't know how many it's been. Um, but his his under the hood stuff. If you're trying to figure out what's going on, his under the hood stuff still looks pretty good. Uh, it still looks pretty good. I want to point out that uh, PLV. See in this top uh, graphic, that is from Pitcher List. PLV is their pitch level value. It's basically like their version of Pitching Plus. Griffin Jacks ranks ninth in all of baseball um, in that metric. Uh, so they love his individual pitches his stuff his command combined those are both factored in there um he also has a pretty good uh csw which is called strike plus whiff rate that usually translates to a good era uh, obviously that's not the case right now you see Jax has a 5.09 era then down in the corner you see the baseball savant metrics which people are probably a little bit more familiar with um that all is looking pretty good except for the, the one thing that kind of doesn't align to maybe how you would expect the way the rest of it looks is his K-rate is below average. And I think that is what we're seeing kind of manifesting, is that he's not giving up a ton of hard hit. He's not giving up barrels. See, I don't think he's given up a home run yet this season. Um, but he's not missing. He's not getting enough strikeouts. I'm not sure if that is he's a little bit predictable right now. Um, he's really up to that slider usage from around about 50% last year to about 70% this year. Now, that is an elite pitch of his. It's probably why he's ranked so high in PLV. He has a great slider, and he throws it a bunch. But I'm wondering if it's kind of overexposed at this point, if they need to start m mixing in his fastball more. Not really sure. Uh, sometimes this is too simple, but I do think he has been unlucky. Uh, his FIP is tremendous. Again, that's that's mainly because he hasn't given up a home run. Um, so we'll just, you know, hope, hopefully he gets through this. My, my concern is that this this cold streak of his might impact his confidence. And then, you know, he's going to maybe start to second guess, you know, and not throw as confidently. Uh, so that's my concern is that maybe that'll catch up uh, eventually. But hopefully Griffin Jacks keeps throwing the ball well. Uh, again, just maybe becomes a little bit less predictable. Uh, maybe hits his spots more, you know, and, and things should even out for him and not, you know, 5.09 5 ERA, 1.53 whip. I'm surprised to see that out of Griffin Jacks. Not that he's this, you know, super um, established reliever. You know, he was a rookie last year, but uh, as a reliever especially. But we should we should do a palate cleanse real quick before we, we talk about more negative items that are going on. I want to thank everybody who reached 6,000 subscribers on the channel a few days ago. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and then also want to call out that I've been going through a, an updated top 50 prospect list for the channel members. I will do an update for everybody maybe toward late June, early July. But one of the things in that, uh, in that updated list I would like to discuss is that Keone Kavako is not even in my twins top 
50 prospects right now. Keone Cavaco, the Twins' first-round draft pick in 2019. He is still only 22 years old. He's currently on the injured list for Cedar Rapids. He has been playing poorly for Cedar Rapids. He has been pushed to first base. Less to do about his fielding and defense, and just more to do with other guys, honestly, deserve more opportunities um, than Keone Cavaco does. And, you know, you, I don't think they wanted to keep him sitting in Fort Myers another year. Um, so they moved him up, and he's been playing mostly first base, but he's injured again. Um, and it is it is rough. It is rough to look at these names that were drafted after Keone Cavaco and think what may have been. Um, oh, by the way, all of these guys also got bonuses smaller than Keone Cavaco, so it's not like that was something in here. Um, but, you know, George Kirby, uh, Bryson Stott, Corbin Carroll, those guys certainly jumped out. Uh, Gunnar Henderson was the first pick of the second round. Um, you know, uh, yeah, uh, oh, it's painful. It's painful, my eyes. Moving on. I, I warned you, this was going to be an ugly one. <laughs> All right, so the last thing I want to do is like a status check, a vibe check. Let's just take a look at where things are. Let's take a look at this upcoming schedule. Um, Twins, first in the division here on, uh, it is Tuesday, so before the Tuesday night game. Uh, still first in the division, still three games up on Cleveland. Uh, still the only AL Central team over 500. Yuck, ick, what a gross division. Um, you see there uh, below that I have the recent schedule. Basically, this is May to date. Um, in terms of runs allowed per game, sometimes I like to look at this a little bit more than ERA. Um, this maybe factors in defense a little bit more. Um, but the Twins are fourth in that metric. They're averaging 3.74. You see at the very bottom of that one, league average is 4.58. So quite a bit better than league average, one of the top five teams in the league. Um, there's a big cliff after the, the Braves, too. There's a big gap between them and San Diego. Uh, so, obviously, run prevention is doing tremendously. That's been a common theme all along. And they are above average in runs scored per game. You see there, the very bottom average is 4.58. The Twins are at 4.74. Um, so, that's great to see. Now, that has something to do with the incredible offensive outburst that they had against the Cubs <laughs> when they scored 11 and 16 runs. But they actually scored eight runs last night against the Dodgers. So uh, it seems like maybe the lineup is uh, clicking more, getting getting things rolling. So that's good. Um, and then taking a look at the schedule, you know, they're, they're staying out west. They have this series with the Dodgers, and then they also play at the Angels in Anaheim. Uh, they are hosting the Giants and the Blue Jays and then going to Houston to, to end this month. So that's kind of what lies ahead Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks to all the channel members for sponsoring the channel. I really appreciate it. Here are the premium members. If you're interested in becoming a member, uh, again, Member Monday. I do a Member Monday video uh, where it's uh, just for members. Uh, but again, if you made it this far, uh, member or not, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thanks again on 6,000. That's really cool. I feel uh, really appreciate and I'm grateful for the support. Anyway, we'll talk again soon. Thank you.